Hey guys, welcome back to the Fertility Confidence Podcast. I was asked this question in my Instagram DMs and I wanted to bring it to the podcast because this isn't the first time I've been asked. And I think it is a small question with a much larger, larger, oh my God, broader, larger and broader together. (laughs) Why am I doing this? Remind me. It's okay. Much larger context. And that is, can I paint my nails if I'm trying to get pregnant? And I suppress a giggle only because some of my clients who've heard me have this conversation will laugh because the nail painting is something that I use as an example when we're talking about endocrine disrupting chemicals. So whenever you're in the fertility world for a few months or more, and you're starting to look for strategies, ways to help support your body, you're wondering, am I doing something wrong? Am I doing something harmful? You're hopping onto Google, you're hopping onto Reddit. And a lot of times you will see very conflicting information. You know, this person says it's totally safe and this person says it's not. Well, you know, my hairdresser says it's fine, but her hairdresser says absolutely not. When we're talking about like hair dye, anything, cosmetics, any sort of chemical exposure, really, we have very polarizing opinions. And here's the reality. We do have literature linking higher levels of endocrine disrupting chemicals, such as parabens, phthalates, BP, BPA, which is plastics, and higher levels in urine correlating to lower levels of fertility potential. We see that. We see a connection with both sperm as well as women's ability to get pregnant and stay pregnant. So we know from the, from the limited research that we have that there is a correlation. Here's where it gets tricky is where's the line, right? Where is that line where once you cross over, it's a problem, but when you're under it, it's not. And that's the tricky thing with endocrine disrupting chemicals. So here's how I approach the conversation. First and foremost, we will very likely never live a completely toxin-free life, even if you've dedicated every ounce of resources to this. Yes, you can do pretty good in terms of reducing things, but even just simply the air that we're breathing when we're walking down the street is exposure. Um, we all have, you know, like why? Well, endocrine disrupting chemicals, radiation, not the same thing. So we'll leave the the we'll leave the Wi-Fi out of the conversation. But um, there's just no way to completely remove everything in our current society. That is a fact. And I think once we can acknowledge that, and we can also acknowledge the reality that it doesn't have to be an all or nothing approach, this conversation around endocrine disrupting chemicals becomes a little bit easier to have because it's so easy to get sucked into toxins are evil. We need to remove everything and you're throwing everything out in your home. You're buying all new clothes without synthetic fabrics and organic cotton only. And you're getting rid of all of your candles and all of your cleaning products and all your hair care and all your makeup and everything that's plastic and, you know, doing the whole gamut. It can feel like a lot. And so whenever someone asks me, Dr. Kelsey, can I paint my nails or should I, should I actually avoid that? I always get them first to look at their toxin exposure as a whole, because at the end of the day, every small change makes a difference. And one tiny little piece is not going to completely set you over the scales unless your toxic burden is already really high. So the more we can decrease our toxic burden, the more we actually have some flexibility. That's how I look at it because I don't believe in an all or nothing approach. I don't believe that you have to be perfect to get pregnant. And if going and getting your nails done is something that brings you joy and is a therapeutic experience for you and makes you feel good about your life, there are some benefits outweighing some potential risks there that we have to take into consideration. We just have to. So 
I found one really um, small study, but it's looking at phthalates in urine and any sort of link to infertility, about 300 women. Um, and they did find that anyone who had higher levels of phthalates in their urine also typically heated food and plastic and used skincare, makeup, sunscreen, and nail polish. That was one of the things that they mentioned and that there was higher degrees of infertility. The other really cool study that I've seen, I don't have open with me, um, and it was actually done in parabens, not in phthalates, but another EDC, and it was young teenage girls. And they took these young teenage girls and they checked their urinary levels of parabens, and then they took away all of their makeup. (laughs) They took these poor teenage girls' makeup away for three weeks. That's it. That's not a very long time. And then they checked them again, and there was something like a 45% decrease in their urinary levels of parabens in just three weeks of just that one exposure. They were probably getting parabens from other things in their life, but they took away their their conventional makeup and had a huge shift in their toxic burden. So I share that with you so that you can exhale and say, even just small changes make a big impact. And that's where this concept of you don't have to be perfect to get pregnant. So at the end of the day, if you're someone who likes to paint your nails and you've, you know, made a few swaps in your hair care or your makeup or your skin care and you're, you've unplugged all of those air fresheners to get all the synthetic fragrance out of the main area of air you're breathing um, and you've changed your cleaning products and you store your food in glass instead of plastic, you've done a lot of those fairly basic but can also feel challenging at times for sure swaps, then your toxic burden is sitting at at that lower level in a perfect world, right? We're not checking your urinary levels of parabens and phthalates, but if we're reducing exposure, we can assume we're at that lower part of our bucket. And if it brings you joy, and I, I love answering this question specifically because I know, I know why people are asking they want holiday nails. (laughs) We want nice nails for Christmas, right? New Year's and all the holiday parties you have to go, you know, put a brave face on to. And if having nice nails and nice hair makes you feel like you can handle those parties and not feel like the outcast dealing with infertility and maybe step out of being that version of yourself for the night, then I say the benefit dramatically outweighs the risk in that conversation. Okay. Same sort of idea when we get asked this about, can I dye my hair? And I always say like, well, talk to your hairdresser about what you're using. Lowest exposure is best. So do we want to have to, you know, do we want to be going in and getting full heads of hair done, especially right up against the scalp? a lot of times. Probably not, like not even for just like your hair really, right? So lowest exposure is always best. And at the end of the day, you know, when it comes, I'm going to come back to the nails for a second. At the end of the day, if you can use a more toxic free nail polish, awesome. But if you can't, or you don't want to, I don't want you to feel like this is having a negative impact in your fertility journey. And it's just one small piece in a large bucket of toxin exposure. And if we can work on other areas, you still get to have some flexibility there. And so I I giggled when I got this question, because for me, this was at a, when people, when we were having this conversation in FCM, it was a time in my life where I was getting my nails done consistently. I'm not anymore. Um, cause honestly, my nails didn't really like it though. They are a lot healthier now with all the added protein I've been eating. So I might try again. We'll see. Um, but after the wedding, last year, I spent like just six months continuously getting my nails done because I loved the way it looked. I love having my nails done. It makes me feel so beautiful and feminine um, until my nails start falling off and then it doesn't feel great anymore. So I'm starting to take them off. But I had someone comment, oh, Kelsey, you have your nails done. Like what kind of nail polish are you using? I can't find a clean one that I like. And I was like, oh, this is not clean. This is shellac that I've gotten done at my conventional spa. Um, And it's the one of the things that for me, I'm okay with not feeling like I'm, you know, ruining all of my progress or I'm burdening my body because I know the majority of things that I am exposing to my skin and my body are 
fairly low toxin or toxin free. So I'm able to be flexible with myself. And I think finding that grace with you and finding that flexibility with what feels right for you is going to help you approach your journey in a way that doesn't feel so suffocating. So I hope that helps. The short answer is like, yes, you are getting exposure to phthalates and likely parabens from nail polish. Yes, the skin around your nails is, you know, absorbing that systemically. Can it, it can be absorbed through the nail bed. There's no denying that. But what is that line of exposure in terms of it being a problem? We don't really know. And at the end of the day, it's a bucket. And so as long as you're actively working on emptying your bucket in other ways, it allows us a bit of flexibility if, and this is a big if, because it's always subjective to how you feel, if it feels right for you. It might not feel right for you in the way it feels right for me, and that's okay. So hopefully this was helpful, guys. I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, our friends over at Needed have made grabbing your supplements that much easier with their women's complete plan or their fertility support plan, both of which you can actually customize to your personal preferences, which we love. Their women's complete plan includes their popular prenatal, which you get to choose if you want their essentials, their powder, or their full force capsule option, an omega-3, either fish or vegan, their collagen, and their pre-probiotic combo. I personally take and love their pre-probiotic as someone who has struggled with their gut. It's one that's actually made a big difference for me. A great combo to support your gut health, your inflammatory pathways, and your overall nutrient status, which we know, and you know from being Fertility Confidence Podcast listeners, these things are really important when we're on our fertility journey. This power combo is gonna support you, not just through your fertility journey, but through your postpartum journey as well, and take all the stress out of what to start, what to stop, when that time comes, so you can find Needed's complete or their fertility support plan over on thisisneeded.com and enjoy 20% off your first order with the code Dr. Kelsey.